Hello, it's January 4th, and I wanted to give you guys a final, um, well, an update on the final configuration I chose to go with. So here's the rocket mass heater. It's really rockety now, and I had to make a few changes in order to do that. I had mentioned before I added the extra pipe, exhaust pipe, to come out there um, because I didn't have enough volume exiting to equal the volume that was going through my riser here. I took the stove pipe out of the riser and uh, just to give it some more volume up there which would equal that of the volume of the air intake and the burn chamber down there in the J-tube. That's something that that probably did the best for it more than anything else was getting that volume in the riser to be equal that of or greater than your J-tube. Then I put the uh, the mortar up here and brought it up to about two and a half inches below the barrel and that gave me about the right amount of volume so it wouldn't bottleneck up there and not be so rockety. Also on the side here uh, I used some fireplace mortar and uh, it's like clay and I just made this right here because I didn't want the air to come down here and just stop. I wanted it to be directed. So I directed that around to go down in to uh, where the exhaust would run through my mass here. So everything works really well. I just had the barrel off to show you guys that. Um, I used Zero's calculations. He, zero, Zero's uh, rocket mass heater plans he had some calculations there. He said that your the distance above your riser should the volume there needs to be 1.5 to 2 times the volume that's inside of the riser. So you can do the calculations there. That actually worked out well when I use his math. I appreciate people who use math correctly and and give actually precise numbers and calculations. There's that extra stovepipe instead of insulating the inside I went with the volume and I just since it was extra I just put it on the outside to insulate the outside the idea being is you don't want the outside to be so hot that it's causing the air to rise so when your fire goes out what was starting to happen was the air would be drawn in it would rise up from the hot riser and then it would just go backwards basically and that gave a little bit of insulation. It's not that big of a deal. The fire brick is pretty thick. But uh, anyway, that's the final configuration. I'll actually go through a... Uh, oh, I did, I did want to show you guys the exhaust. Because our greenhouse would fill up with steam, carbon dioxide, I didn't want to harm the chickens much, so I got this exhaust here. I ran it right out to where my exhaust fan was, which I don't need to have that on. The heat will actually carry it out there. But uh, there's the exhaust coming out of the house. And uh, so you got your six inch stovepipe, the three inch stovepipe. I kind of just wedged them in there to uh, the eight inch diameter air duct. All right, chicken, excuse me. I'll go ahead and do a start for you guys just so you can see how, how rockety it is. Set this here so I can get the barrel back on there. The barrel wasn't exactly uh, a perfect circle or a perfect cylinder, so I had to make a little marking on it and then a marking on the the heater to align it up each time so I make sure I get it in the same spot. That way I get a good seal. And right there's the spot we like. I'll also seal up around the outside here as well. Let's see here, what are you looking at? Oh, there it is. Okay, so uh, maybe I should get it up higher or something. But in any case, uh, I just get some newspaper, put some 
back in there a little ways. Maybe I can hold it this way. See what I'm showing you guys. Put about two pieces of newspaper. I have some back in the, the J-tube. And I have some here at the front. And then, just like that, it should it should actually want to um, the heat should want to go back that way back into the J-tube I'm not used to doing this with my left hand and I got some kindling here, there it goes <laughs> I got some kindling and you just set that on there kindling pieces I'm gonna need some more newspaper. Well, I got the wood lit. But I wanna help it out a little bit. Not lit that well. Okay. Uh, once it's might get a little poof going back here a little bit, but once you got the uh, flow going that way, which it should want to go that way anyway, then don't have to worry about smoke too much coming out this way. Let's see how it does here. I just want to help that wood get lit just to start. It's starting to get lit now. Okay. Did more testing than I expected to do. I just wanted to get it to become real rockety. And so I finally got there, I think. And once you get more pieces in, you should start to hear that rockety sound. Oop, got some pieces that fell over. That's okay. We're, we're still going. So the key is just to have some kindling ready to put in here once you get the paper lit. And then once the kindling's going, just like you build any fire, you, you start to put larger pieces in. Simple as that. So it's going, I won't have to do anything else except for add bigger and bigger pieces of wood. So I'm pretty pleased with it. It's a cold day, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do a burn. Um, once the wood starts going a little bit more, you'll hear more of the rocket, rockety effect. I can hear it a little bit now. Get the paper, give it a nice big boost to get these new pieces of wood going. And that's the rocket mass heater. It's a little bit more tricky than I thought it would be. But the key is to you calculate the volume of your air intake in your J-tube and then your volume needs to equal that coming up your riser and also going out your exhaust. I would do it this way again. There's one small change I would make since I had to make that extra uh, exhaust tube. I would probably instead of running the exhaust through all of this one exhaust, I just take uh, two exhausts to go in and then two to come out and to exit. That chicken's curious what's going on here. What's going on in here? She was sticking her head in here trying to figure this out. So that's where the air intake is and I have it directed so that the air, the cooler air coming in will blow right over the hot barrel and it'll warm it so you don't have here. What's going on in here? I don't have any feed for you in here. Okay, here just within a minute or two you can 
you can hear the rocket effect start. So you want to hear something like that. And uh, it'll become stronger. Another factor was uh, if we had a south wind, before I had this exhaust hooked up, if the south wind was blowing into this wall over here, it would create more pressure and it wouldn't be as rockety. If we had a north wind, it would kind of... There was a north wind the other day. It was so rockety that it almost blew my fire out. There was just a lot of air moving through there real fast. situated. There we go. Let's see hear that. I don't know if I gave you guys a final update on the solar panels. I have a Fronius IG Plus. It's branded Sun Power. And looks like we're doing 4,500 watts right now. It's mostly sunny. It's a little bit hazy every now and then. I'll show you guys that setup. So you can see the exhaust. You can see a little bit of steam, but it's mostly just clear coming out there. One thing I noticed that was kind of interesting was um, it would come mostly out the three inch pipe as the fire is warming up. But after it was burning for about an hour, everything was warm, it would stop coming out of the 3-inch pipe so much and it would go through all the, the mass and it would come out the 6-inch pipe. I thought that was kind of interesting. Alright, let's go out here, I'll show you the solar panel shed. I did some calculations and found out that with an 80 mile per hour wind directly from the north, this would virtually become weightless due to the angle and it would create lift. That's that's a lot of wind that you would be catching there with this. This is it's pretty tall, 12 foot tall. I didn't like that idea in case we had a, a really strong storm. We get 70 mile per hour winds every year, sometimes more, or if we had a tornado or something. So I went ahead and built the shed on this side to direct some of that to become downward pressure. And so uh, it made a loft up there. So that's going to hold uh, our hay for our sheep and our goats. And it's cold out here. I think it's 20 degrees. Is a happy boy. Oh, sorry about that. Where did he go? He was running around. We got a new rooster yesterday too, or the day before yesterday. <laughs> Molly only had one um, kid, and we lost that kid. It was dead when we came out and found her. Those things happen. But I'm milking her. She's still producing colostrum a little bit. Hopefully she'll start to fill up and become a good milk goat for us. And Arrow is about to have her kids, and she should have at least two. Alright. It's, it's gotten cold in here. We've had some really cold nights. But things that do well in the cold is the sugar snap peas. They're still going strong. They can take a freeze. Broccoli can do okay. Looks like chickens are eating the lettuce. Cilantro can take multiple freezes and still be okay. There's some cilantro that's coming up. But the chickens are starting to tear into something, so I'm starting to not like the idea of the chickens. Our tea tree 
can take multiple freezes. And uh, it's still doing okay, as well as some of the mint. So, well, here's some popping in here. Anyways, the update on the solar panel shed. Oh, we got some wood falling down the wrong way here. The thing about a rocket mass heater is you do have to babysit it a little bit. The wood falls the wrong way, you create problems. You can't you can stop your flow. And you have to keep adding wood to it. So I wouldn't advise leaving a rocket mass heater burning in your home. I had a wood, a long piece of wood actually plopped over and fell out the wrong way last night. Once it gets real hot, I can burn some of this wood that's not so great, some pallets. And this was part of a pallet. It's really, it's junk wood. But the rocket mass heater burns so efficiently, it actually just burns it up. It works all right. Anyway, that's your update here on January 4th. Rocket mass heater's going well. We will probably show you this in the future once we have kind of um, put the finishing touches. We'll put some clay, make some cob, and then coat all the outside eventually. Uh, this is fine for me. I don't need it to look super great. we got so many projects going on. But we do want to make it look nice here and make this bench look nice here eventually. Next projects coming up are going to be, I want to make a, uh, go ahead and build up a studio here in the basement and we want to remodel our master bathroom. So we'll be showing you those things in the future. we got a lot of little things we need to do as well. Alright, you can see, you might not be able to see it, but there is a little bit of smoke coming out here. I don't have it seated perfectly, and I'll also go ahead and seal that up now that we're, I'm finished tinkering with it so nothing can escape. Just seeping right out around the edge there. You can see that crack. I need to push the barrel back a little bit, and then we'll finish it off. Pretty happy with it. It's kind of fun. Hear that rocket sound a little bit.